All right, everyone, science news time. Link in the description, archived, of course. Turns out that, you know, the Mediterranean diet uh, that has been talked up a lot for basically the last 20 years, a new study is showing that it can actually severely reduce dementia risk uh, in people with certain genetics, especially if they have two copies of one particular gene, uh, the, or allele, rather, uh, that can you know, lead to early onset uh, Alzheimer's, it reduces it by 35%. Now, I would like to opine here. This is exciting. It's actually quite a significant study if it's borne out by additional research, by the way. Dementia is one of the main problems as the population of the world gets older uh, and people have longer lifespans and you have you know, an aging population in much of the world. Uh, dementia is going to become more and more of a problem Look at China, for example, because of the throttling of birth rates by the one-child policy, and then the two-child policy, and now the three-child policy, um, and people still aren't making considerably more babies because there's nowhere to go, basically. The whole country is completely developed for the most part, at least the arable parts of it. Um, it's, it's become a problem. You know, fewer and fewer young people to prop up an economy capable of taking care of the old people. This is, by the way, why a certain disease was developed, in my opinion. Demographic uh, doomsday, basically. Uh, Japan has this problem. Italy, um, Germany has this problem. Parts of the United States, at least definitely the urban areas, have this problem. Healthy eating is, though, kind of a no-brainer. The problem is nutritional science. Now, my own personal diet is I indulge in whatever I have a craving for at the time if I've got it on hand. If I'm craving a huge pile of Brussels sprouts, I'm going to eat them. If I'm craving uh, uh, mandarin oranges, which the other day I had a massive craving for them, I ate like three of them in a row, uh, then I'll eat mandarin oranges. I trust my body generally to tell me what kind of nutrients I need and where I could obtain those nutrients. Now, I give in to my cravings because my cravings are never for things like sweets and, and like greasy foods and shit like that. Once in a while, I'll eat a hamburger. Once in a while, it's okay to get fast food. For the most part, though, I lean towards dairy products, kefir and, and cottage cheese being among my favorites, by the way. I wish I could get some of that uh, 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 yogurt that was made by water buffalo, actually. That was, that was bitchin'. Unfortunately, you can't get it anymore. I'll never have it again. I only got a chance to have it on one or two occasions. Very, very sad. Uh, dairy green vegetables, uh, or most vegetables, actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the gene to detect the bitterness uh, in green vegetables. We did a test about this uh, when I was in uh, uh, one uh, biological uh, anthropology, actually, when I was at UVM. Uh, I am sensitive to MSG, which is why I don't like a lot of the artificially salted, like, Chinese foods and shit that you get, like at Panda Express. I find them detestful. Uh, but I can't detect the bitterness in green vegetables. And then, of course, fruits and red meats. I don't really like chicken. Fish, I prefer raw. Uh, sushi, basically. And I'm not a huge fan of a lot of carbs. So my diet is already relatively healthy uh, because I only indulge in the things that are, are you know, my body needs, actually. Nutrient-dense, plenty of fiber, etc., etc., lots of minerals and shit. But the Mediterranean diet um, is kind of a no-brainer when you think about it. Now, originally, <clears throat> this concept was developed around the concept that, uh, look look at these Italians. You know, they're eating all of these, you know, rich foods and stuff like that, but they keep living so long. And then, then they said, hmm, maybe it has something to do with the diet. Maybe the diet's healthy after all. Turns out that eating a shit ton of vegetables and everything that you do and lots and lots of tomatoes, yes, I'm a fan, uh, it turns out that it's healthy. Now, this particular recommendation says, uh, basically, it's red meat, greens, um, fruits, and, and, you know, certain other vegetables, nuts, uh, things like that. Uh, they're nuts! Uh, <laughs> thrembos. <laughs> Some of you will get the reference. Probably most of you won't. Uh, <laughs> it's... never mind. Anyway, dementia is no joke, so anything that can prevent it, really, I mean, the, the health benefits overall by having a healthy diet um, are incalculable. 
But again, the problem is the food recommendations that have been made over time. Look at the FDA's old food pyramid from when I was a kid. Oh yeah, it's good to eat a whole loaf of bread every single day. Yeah, Wonder Bread, it's wonderful for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, the only thing that they got right was, hey, you should probably limit the oily, greasy, sugary foods. Uh, and then they said salt was the enemy. Now we find out that salt's not the enemy, at least in regularly ingested quantities. Although I will say, it's probably not healthy for you if you go and get a pile of french fries that are already salted and then put more salt on them it probably you know you don't really need to do that that's i see people do that all the time uh when i've been in fast food restaurants you'll see someone there with a big greasy salty pile of french fries or even chips in some cases and they'll have a bunch of salt packets and they'll be dumping them into the french fries and then they'll dip it in ketchup which also has a bunch of salt in it it's not good for you. I will say ketchup is my guilty pleasure. I put it on lots of foods. Maybe I should put it on a salad as a subscriber challenge or something like that. That would be funny. Uh, anyway, uh, if it can slow down dementia, you save a shit ton of money too over time. But what we need is proper guidance with regards to nutrition. Eggs are a great example. I've brought this up before. Eggs were the devil. Now eggs are a great source of protein. They're also extremely expensive, prohibitively for certain socioeconomic classes. Thank you, Biden. Real cool uh, for killing all of those chickens for literally no reason. Um, beef, um, as long as it's not processed, so a steak, again, prohibitively expensive for the average person at this point. But uh, it's, it's good for you. Uh, red meat, cooked properly. Um, not not all processed to shit and filled with binders, you know, usually corn and soy based stuff like that. Those are good for you. Um, onions and stuff like that. Uh, any of those kinds of uh, uh, vegetables, they're also good for you. High in fiber, high in certain minerals, uh, low cal, you know, you garnish your salad with it, you know, any of these things. I like beets a lot. I like carrots a lot. You get some beta carotene that's good for your eye health. Uh, things along those lines are all good for you. I believe in a more rustic diet myself, but I also believe in an individualized diet. For instance, some people, they just really can't process dairy. Their body just doesn't want it. Well, then you shouldn't eat, you should limit the amount of dairy that you intake. Your body's telling you something about that. The only problem that I have with studies like this is it doesn't look into the individual factors uh, that might be, uh, that might be at play. And science has has come to accept it. This was this was something that would have been a foreign concept twenty years ago. It, uh, but scientists are now debating this quite hotly. Actually, should we tailor medicine to the individual based on genetics? Based on you know, I, I like to think of it as a mental thing. Your brain instinctively knows what you need. Your brain instinctively knows what you need to be ingesting at any given time. Uh, because evolution favors a brain that's capable of doing so. And so I think that medicine, especially dietary medicine, should be generally individualized. So one diet plan works for one person, it doesn't work for another. This person's body responds very well to red meat, that person doesn't. For instance, <clears throat> I like pork. I like bacon specifically. That's my favorite. Nice maple glazed ham ain't bad either. But I can't digest pork chops very well, so I never eat them. I just can't digest them. Cooked in that manner, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I really like dairy, but I know people that really don't eat any dairy products. Which reminds me, I could guzzle that uh, pint of milk that I've got still in the fridge uh, later on. Because I'm literally I'm craving it as we speak. Um, so this is good. It's a good development. But when the government comes out with studies and says, you know, coffee causes heart disease, and then 20 years later we find out, whoops, they didn't fix the study for smoking, um, it gives me a little bit less trust in government health agencies. Studies like this, that may be publicly funded, but at the same time they're independent, uh, generally speaking, they're a little bit more reliable, at least in my personal opinion. So yeah. Mediterranean diet, it turns out that it may suppress dementia. This is good news. And the Mediterranean diet's tasty anyway. Who doesn't like a good uh, linguine with a homemade uh, sauce, uh, preferably a red sauce? Some people cook it with a white sauce. I'll, I'll stick with the tomatoes myself. Thanks. <laughs> That's about all. Peace out.